whatever. But if you look at it, it's, we're really paying a disproportionately high expense through taxes, mandatory taxes, and not through user fees that people can control. And, you know, and, and I hear all this talk, although I don't watch a certain cable stations, but all this talk about liberty. You know, liberty is the ability to choose, and sometimes when given the ability to choose, it's not what actually happens. So I think that's just a very interesting chat, and I'll avoid political comments. Uh, as you can see, this is, the, this is what we call the pro forma. This is all the budgets put together. Uh, the town spending is proposed to go up 4.2%. School spending under the superintendent's budget, I don't know what the school board has done with it so far, but I would guess it would be pretty close to that 2.2% that Superintendent Murphy recommended. Uh, you know, overall spending, if you look at all the different budgets, the county and community service and everything else, is proposed to go up 2.7. The cost of living is currently 1.6. Uh, there's a new CPIU coming out March 17th. We'll see what that says. Uh, revenue, uh, the town revenues are up because of surplus amounts. School revenues are down, primarily because the stimulus monies are gone. Community services is flat. I hope they're not too optimistic there. And overall revenues are down about 1%. The amount that we would collect from taxes, uh, if you add it all together, is 3.7% more. But there's, there's additional valuation. Uh, and because of the additional valuation, it actually, instead of the tax rate going up 3.7% as a result of all these different budgets, it's 2.4%. Uh, and that's as the budget says they've been proposed to the, the elected bodies. The county assessment is already set, uh, and that is up 4.7 percent. The county budget itself wasn't up that much, but because of this year with the county, our valuation uh, went up a little bit while other places went down. We ended up paying more of the county budget this year, but we've gotten, you can see uh, we're still paying less than we were. Uh, uh, two years ago, we were paying 967,000 versus 992 today. The, the one thing I want to talk about, because there's been so much attention with, with Wisconsin and other places, is you know what what do we do for retirement for our employees, and how do we differ from all the different issues you read nationally to do with retirement? Uh, a defined benefit retirement plan is a typical retirement plan like Main Street Retirement or the ones you read of, of all these different places. Our only employees who have a defined benefit plan. You know, they work so many years and they get a pension of a set amount. Our only, the only employees that we that have that are police officers. There are a couple of individuals who were in the old retirement plan 15 years ago who are allowed to stay in that, who are still in it. Uh, but no one has been able to get into that retirement plan for more than 15 years. All other employees have what we call a defined contribution plan. The town contributes 7 percent, they match 7 percent. Uh, you know, compared to the private sector, that is probably a little bit more generous. They, they don't do a one-on-one -on -one match, but it is typically what, what is done, particularly for public service employees here in Maine. We also participate in Social Security. The town contributes 7.65% uh, to Social Security and Medicare as mandated by law. The employees usually contribute that amount because of a special thing in the tax uh, bill that passed the Congress last December. It's actually a little bit less for, for this year. Uh, that we don't have, we hear about retiree health benefits and the future costs, we don't have any retiree health benefits. When you, when you leave employment for the town of Cape Elizabeth, you, you pick up your own health insurance cost. So you know, overall, you know, we, don't, we don't have this huge vulnerability that, that uh, other entities have with retirement. We, we have the police are part of an overall statewide consolidated plan, it's fully funded. Uh, you know, unlike the state system, the state system, the big problem is, is that the state was supposed to be funding it and wasn't. Uh, there was, uh, the employees were kicking in 7.65%, the state was only kicking in 2.65%. Uh, and, you know, as a result, that's grossly underfunded and as a result of the investment declines. The police officer thing, consolidated plan's not like that because the communities have been funding it. Uh, so anyway, that's the, where we stand with retirement. It's, uh, yeah, we do have a little bit of an unfunded liability for what we got out of 15 years ago, but still, it's, you know, we, we know the potential uh, isn't that great there because of actuarially, there's, uh, I'm trying to put this politely, is a lot of people retired a lot more years, a lot of years ago, and they aren't going to be collecting a whole lot in the future, particularly because it was based originally on their earnings from way back.
Any questions at all? Good. I look forward to, again, discussing this with you on Wednesday. And a lot of this is all online. PowerPoint presentation. This, but uh, the whole budget, the budget message, all that's online. Thank you. I'll see if it's We're going to be getting some feedback. Thanks, Mike. Oh, okay. All right, item 58-2011, uh, work plans. Uh, we received work plans from the Alternative Energy Committee, the Arts Commission, the Conservation Commission, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, the Ordinance Committee, the Planning Board, the Recycling Committee, and the trustees of the Thomas Memorial Library. And actually, I want to correct myself we get one from Fort Williams Advisory Commission? We did not yet. Uh, Mike, is that on its way to us? I tried to email it to you. Did you get it, Caleb? Yes, I don't have one. Did okay. <laughs> All right. I tried the other day. All right. Um, I don't know if we need to do much beyond just indicating that we've received them, but go ahead, Frank. We haven't got one from the Cemetery uh, Commission. Um, we'll be meeting, we'll be meeting next week. Are there any other uh, bodies out there that we need? There's the zoning board, but I talked to Mike about it. I, I will um, contact the code enforcement officer since they just respond to appeal. Their work plan is just to respond to appeals. <laughs> they don't have a work plan other than that. Right. So. Okay. But I'll, I'll email the code enforcement officer so we can get something that sure. says that. All right. Is there are there any others that we need to think about? Uh, anybody want to discuss any of these or have any questions? Anne. I just have one comment that I um, was very impressed by the amount of work. When you see it all laid out, all the work that all these volunteers do for the community, it's really quite impressive. And so, I think we're really lucky to have all these folks who are. Uh, doing all this work for our, for us, for our fellow citizens, so. Yeah, and I want to echo that comment. I was very impressed with these work plans, uh, and there's a lot of uh, that vision thing that one of our former presidents used to talk about <laughs> in these work plans, people really taking the long-term view of what is best for our town. So uh, I, for one, really appreciate that. Um, okay. Item 59-2011, the Planning Board Ordinance Committee Coordination. Uh, Jim, since you're the chair of the Ordinance Committee and our liaison to the Planning Board, could you uh, explain to the council what this is about? Okay, first, uh, first off, I you know, want to recognize that we have Elaine Philander, who's the Planning Board Chair here tonight as well. And um, Elaine is also um, you know, I welcome you to the podium if you wish you want to add anything to what we're going to present here uh, this evening, if, if you will. Um, Elaine and um, Maureen and uh, Michael and myself, we met uh, in February uh, to really talk about the, the liaison position and the relative uh, communications between the two boards, uh, the ordinance committee being, you know, a subset of the town council. And um, in that in that meeting, we talked about this sort of as is, what we currently do. And what you have in front of you is a model that describes across the top the way the current uh, communication between citizens or groups to town council, then to the planning, uh, planning board, and back to us, and then ultimately to decisions that the town council will have after a public hearing. And, um, in the conversation between Elaine, Maureen, Michael, and myself, we determined that, that in the interest of um, recognizing the quality of the communication, that we might want to take a little different approach to this in this next year, if you will, especially in light of some of the sort of larger questions that are on the table relative to the, to the comprehensive plan and the fact that we, we pressed the pause button last year on 
continuing to execute or to, um, to implement the, co the comprehensive plan. And there wasn't quite the level of discussion, if you will, between the two boards about why and how and what are our expectations and, 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 and really what are we ultimately trying to accomplish here by citizen involvement, either by appointment or by those elected officials that sit here today. So what you see across the bottom is that at the, at the first level, when the town council refers something to the planning board, um, it, um, the town council has discussed the amendment idea, but then at the first planning board discussion, which might be a workshop, the suggestion was made by this group that a town councilor who is, the, is the, the contact between the two boards might attend that meeting and to simply explain some of the background or the wisdom as to why it's being referred to them. Um, again, the effort isn't to really um, to, uh, to, to have us um, sort of define the agenda or the process. It's more around just explain why are we giving them the discussion about roosters, okay, is a good example. You know, why are we doing that? And, and again, um, then the planning board would then go into its process in dealing with the question and then coming back to us and making a recommendation. Now, um, at that point, the planning board chair would then, or his or her designee, would then present back to the council what their recommendation is, and again, impart some of the, the wisdom as to why they have decided on what they're recommending for us. And finally, the ordinance committee, we, which is an ongoing monthly meeting, uh, and as, as you know, between Anne Frank and myself, with Maureen's help as the staff person, we asked or in this discussion that if we had more understanding of where we're both going as, an, as institutions within the town, uh, that, that they would send a person who would just attend our meetings as a citizen, certainly involve themselves at whatever level they wish to in that meeting because we do allow citizen input. But to physically be there um, and, again, continuing the dialogue and making sure that there's better understanding of both what the planning board is about to do or not do or recommend and also what we as the ordinance committee um, finally recommend to you, the town council, to vote on. So it's really more um, trying to articulate a better um, conversation between an appointed board and this elected board and um, again, it's a little bit of a departure from what we have currently been doing. Not to say that what we have is broken, but we certainly, I know Elaine is very, very intent on, on making sure that the time and the talent and the energy that's put into planning board activity is purposeful and focused and that they are acting on behalf of citizens and also on behalf of themselves uh, in, in the best interest of the town of Cape Elizabeth. So this is something to trial. Um, <clears throat> I think um, when we had the conversation, um, Michael indicated, why not give it a shot? Let's, let's see how we can do this. What you have there is that you have a memo that articulates what took place at our meeting. I had Maureen do this model because of my thought it might be just a little easier to understand if it was modeled for you. Um, to have an as-is and then the new enhanced program. So again, um, uh, what I really need, I believe, at this point, Michael, of direct, uh, direction is do I need a, um, to me to make a motion that we accept this concept or how do we? That'd be fine. Okay. Um, and then David, uh, in terms of Elaine wanting to jump in and add her points of view, is it now the time or should I make a motion and then open it up or how do, how do, how do we want to work this? Uh, why don't we put a motion on the table but then we'll have discussion and allow Elaine to offer some input at that point. Okay. Um, I, then I guess I would like to move that we, um, we um, implement an ordinant, the ordinance amendment process as, um, as outlined in the memo dated February 28th, 2011. Um, to enhance town council and planning board communications for the fiscal year that we're in today or in this year, effective immediately. Second it. 
Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh,